biology. So this time in biology, you know that science is divided into three parts. What is it? Yeah, chemistry, physics, and biology. Do you know the meaning of science? Yes, it came from the Latin word scientia, meaning knowledge. And the people who study science and do researches on it is called scientists. You all know there are so many scientists, right? So many of them, they, some like, some found gravity, like Isaac Newton. So many that they, they brought the world to life. So let's learn more in biology. As I said, this is our new biology textbook, Exploring Biology. So let's open it. I'm excited. I hope you guys do. So as earlier I said, the science came from the Latin word scientica, meaning knowledge, and scientist. science is converted into three parts, physics, chemistry, and biology. So in biology, there are two parts, named zoology and botany. So zoology is the uh, deals with the study of animals and like that, and botany deals with the study of plants. So the bio biology means bios, life, and logos, study, life study. It was first used by Lamrak and Tavaranas in 1802. Aristotle is the Greek philosopher is regarded as the father of biology. So, what is the importance of biology? Why do we need biology in our life? First of all, it's to understand life. So, uh, as we asked, why do we need life, uh, biology in life? To understand what is life, what is the world in going on, how we are doing in each of our work. Everything we can know about with biology. And it's also helpful to maintain our good health. For example, we are keeping good health because of biology. Do you know why? Because we learned in biology that we should keep ourselves safe. For example, studying about safety aids and so on. And importance of balanced diet. Biology helps us understand that we should eat the right amount of food at the right time. So it will help us maintain our balanced diet. And population control. It will help us control each and every population, the rate of populations. And pollution and its control. It will also help us know what will happen if pollution happens in our environment and knowledge of useful plants and animals, for example, in they, what, are, uh, what they give us. For example, hen give us eggs or plants give us oxygen and how we are independent to each other and so on. Better crop yield. Better crop yield means, for example, farmers uh, do so many croppings and things because they know what is in in biology because of biology they know everything every single the leaf the roots the fruits everything they knew because of biology and industry it provides knowledge about various industrial products obtained from plants and animals like medicines leather fertilizers cosmetics and timber you know it's easy improved variety of plants and animals various biological producers help us improve, produce improved varieties of plants and animals. Conservation of natural resources. Biology education educates us on the importance of various aspects of natural resources and the need for their conservation. The eleventh one is maintaining the ecosystem, which means that how we are interdependent to each other, how we do that, how we do this, uh, how uh, plants and animals are interdependent or uh, yeah, you got the point, right? So, improvement of human race, how human uh, got rising because of biology and a uh, successful career. For example, doctors, scientists, teachers, pathologists, and many more, they helped us know what is biology. So, move that aside, we learned what is biology, what is science. So, let us come back to our chapter. So, our first chapter is the leaf. You know what is the leaf? Yeah, it's a greeny thing that is on every plant. You might think, what is it? Let's learn more in this chapter. But you might say, we learned everything. We learned that, we learned this. But no, you still haven't learned so many things. You have to learn much more. So let's stop beating around the bush and come back to the point. If this is a plant, yeah, it is. So let's uh, identify the parts. 
This is the root, this is the stem, these are the leaves, the fruit, the buds, the flower. See, everything's right there. So, as, the, uh, as everything we said, the plant is converted into two systems. The root system and the shoot system. The part of the plant above the soil is called the shoot system, while the part of the plant below the soil is called the root system. So in the root system, there are two main parts. So as I said that there are two types of root system. So what are those two types of root system? They are the tap root system and the fibrous root system. You might think, what is tap root and what is a uh, uh, fibrous root? So, first I'll explain what is a tap root system. A tap root system is made up of primary root and secondary roots. See this line here? It's this uh, large root starting from the middle? That is a primary root. And see these are the roots following from it? These are the secondary roots. So if anyone sees a root like this, you can understand that this is a tap root. The next one is the fibrous root. So the fibrous root has many, many roots starting from the same point. See? So if you see a plant having so many roots starting from the same point, then it is a fibrous root system. So what are the functions of roots? Fixation. So the root holds the plant firmly to the ground, which means it holds it tightly to the ground so that it does not fall, it does not die. In absorption, they absorb water and minerals from the soil. Yeah, they take uh, water and minerals from the soil and give it to the plants. Till they bind particles of the soil. They bind the particles of the plant and the soil together, and that's how, you know, yeah. So next one is the shoot system and in the shoot system we studied so many things as stem, leaves, buds, flowers, fruits, axillary bud and so on. So first we'll be learning about stem. The main part of the shoot system is the stem. It bears other parts of the shoot system. See this is the stem, the main part. Do you know why? Yes, because it carries the leaves, the fruits, the buds, the axillary buds, every single thing it carries. So it is called the main part of the shoot system. So what are the features of the stem? It grows upwards toward the sunlight. The stem of the most plants are quite strong and they stand erect on their own. They hold the plant upright. The part of the stem where the leaf grows is called a node. Do you know what is the part of the stem that a leaf grows is called? See, the place where the leaf grows. This place is called node. See, nodes. The region of the system between two adjacent nodes is called an internode. See, the space in between, if here's a node and here's a node, and there's a space in between here, so this space is called the internode. The undeveloped shoots present on the stem of a plant are called buds. There are two types of bud terminal or apical bud and the axillary bud. The bud present at the tip of the stem is called the terminal bud. It is responsible for upward growth of the plant. The bud found in the axil is called an axillary bud. It gives us the rise of new branches of the plant. Uh, as I told you, the apical bud and the axillary bud, the bud that grows at the top is called the apical bud. See? And the bud that grows on the sides are called the axillary buds. Now, let's move to the functions of the stem. Support. It bears branches, buds, leaves, flowers, and fruits. 2. Conduction. It conducts water and minerals from the roots to other parts of the plant. It also conducts the prepared food from the leaves 
to other parts of the plant. You know, it's uh, it's acting like a pipe. It's uh, taking the water which the roots are giving to them, and they're giving to the leaves, the plants, every other. Two, food production. Some green stems contain chlorophyll, and they manufacture food. For example, cactus. Orientation of leaves on the stem. The leaves are arranged in a way that they get maximum sunlight. Means the arrangement of the leaf. Orientation means arrangement. So do you know the stem of the cactus plant is green and fleshy. It prepares food for the plant. So here are some questions. Let's ask. So let us move to the next part. The leaf. Oh, I love leaves. I hope you do because the chapter's name starts with the leaf. Give importance to it. The flat, thin and green lateral structure attached to the node of a stem is called a leaf. An axillary bud is always present in the axile of a leaf. Leaves stop growing after attaining full size unlike stems that keep growing. So what are the, par what are the parts of a leaf? 1. The petiole. The stump that attaches the leaf to the stem is called a petiole. 2. Lamina. The leaf blade. The flat and broad green part of the leaf is called the lamina. Leaf margin. The outline of the lamina is called the leaf margin. Leaf apex. The tip of a leaf is called apex. Midrib. The petiole into the lamina at the center as the thick midrib. There are two types of leaf. One, the simple leaf. Two, the compound leaf. A leaf with single lamina is called a simple leaf, while a leaf with which a, the lamina is divided into leaflets is called a compound leaf. So these all are the leaflets and this part is called the ratches. Next is, it is the different shapes of leaves. Leaves have different shapes. Do you know? The people leaf has a heart-shaped leaf, while a lotus is a circular, and a banana has an oblong leaf. Well, what are the ty uh, different types of edges of leaf? Some are smooth, some are toothed, some are serrate, serrate some are lobbed and spiny, and so on. Different textures of leaf. Different leaves have different textures. Some are smooth and sm soft, and some are rough and hairy, some are fleshy and thick, and others are thin and papery, some are juicy, others are dry. Next is the arrangement of leaf. So there are at least three arrangements of leaf. One, alternate. Two, opposite. Three world. See the alternate leaves, opposite leaves, and yeah, it's another type of opposite leaf. And these are the world leaves. So what are alternate leaves? One leaf grows from each node. Another leaf grows from another successive node in the opposite direction. Well, as I told you, and the node, the node of a stem. So in an alternate leaf, the one in one node only one leaf grows, but on an opposite leaf, uh, in a one node, two leaves grow, and each on the opposite direction. While on the world leaves, in one node, so many leaves grow. See, for example, Calotropis in leaves. Do you know what is venation in leaves? As uh, arrangement of leaves, uh, the leaves are arranged on the stem. Well, venation in leaves are the uh, arrangement of wings. Easy. So there are two types for this too. The reticulate venation and the parallel venation. Reticulate venation. When wings form a net-like pattern on both sides of the midrib, the venation is called reticulate venation. This venation is found in the leaves of people, china rose, mustard, and mango. And the next one is the parallel venation. 
See the parallel lunations have wings run parallel to each other or parallel to the midrib. The lunation is called parallel lunation. This is found in leaves of bamboo, banana, wheat and grass. And earlier I told you the taproot and the fibrous root. If anyone asks you, does this plant have a taproot or a fibrous root, what would you do? Would you pluck the plant and look? No, you should never pluck this. An easy way is to look at the venation of the leaves. If the leaves have a reticulate venation, then it is a taproot. Well, if it has a parallel venation, it's a We have ended our class today. Here there are so many others. I'll explain you that in the next class. And if you didn't understand, just take a leaf and check it and understand what I said. Just uh, if you didn't understand anything, back the video and listen. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment box video please press the like button and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you can get all the videos that we upload bye